welcome children today we are going to start with a new chapter of geography chapter 3 motions of the earth you are familiar with the word motion motion means movement now what type of motion does earth show the earth has periodic and circular motion what are the new terms we will be studying in this chapter you know rotation and revolution very well in this chapter you will be learning the meaning of axial and orbital plane circle of illumination solstice and equinox important topics to be covered is the two important motions of the earth and the consequences of the two motions of the earth look at these pictures the pictures are depicting about the axial and the orbital plane axial plane is formed by the axis and helps the earth to rotate and we know that earth axis is tilted at 23 and a half degrees whereas orbital plane helps the earth to revolve and forms the angle of 66 and a half degrees with the axis now what does the picture showing yes it is showing earth's rotation and we all know that rotation is the movement of the earth on its axis it takes 24 hours for earth to rotate on its axis the second motion of the earth is revolution revolution is the movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed orbit earth takes 365 one fourth day to revolve around the sun now what does this picture depicts it tells how day and night are caused that is the part of the earth that receives the sun has day and the opposite side has night this can be related to the last chapter if the eastern hemisphere is facing the sun it has day and the other hemisphere that is the western hemisphere has night and vice versa circle of illumination is a line or circle that separates the day from night don't get confused with it with the axis it is just a separating line as seen in the second picture now the question what if earth stops rotating yes one part of the earth will have day and the other part will have night forever the conditions would be very extreme one side will be very very hot and the other side will be other side would have freezing cold and life would not be possible on the earth how seasons are caused by revolution i know each one of you are know that the revolution causes the season but how here you can see that the northern hemisphere is facing towards the sun so the tropic of cancer receives the direct rays of the sun right and it has the longest day on june 20th now the earth rotates and the both the hemisphere they receive the same amount of sunlight right and that is the time of the autumnal equinox that is september 22 and 23 now at this position the southern hemisphere is facing the sun right so the southern hemisphere will have summers and the northern hemispheres will have winter and this is the time of december 21 to 22 and this is again the position when both the hemisphere receives the equal amount of sunlight and this is the time of vernal equinox that is march 21 and 22 in the northern hemisphere now let us do the equinox and solstice in detail now children if you could see the picture this in this picture the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun very important to remember children that because of the axis right only one of the hemisphere either the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun here the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun so it has summers and the southern hemisphere is away from the sun is tilted away from the sun so it has winter 
right now children so the northern hemisphere has summer solstice now before we move ahead we should know the meaning of the solstice solstice is the time when the sun reaches its highest or lowest point at noon resulting in the shortest and the longest day of the year now since here the northern hemisphere is facing towards the sun so it has summer solstice whereas the southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun so it has the winter solstice right so what happens in the summer solstice the days are longer and the nights are smaller or we can say nights are shorter okay now the condition change this picture shows the that the southern hemisphere right is tilted towards the sun and the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun so here the hemisphere right which is facing which is tilted towards the sun has the summer solstice whereas the other hemisphere will have the winter solstice so since here the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun so it has the winter solstice so the conditions are now different in the northern in the southern hemisphere now the summer, southern hemisphere has the summer solstice and what are the uh, features of the uh, winter solstice that the days are shorter and the nights are longer now this is the condition where both the hemisphere receives the equal amount of sunlight and therefore they have equal length of day and night and this condition is known as the equinox now what is equinox means the equal length of day and night and in the northern hemisphere we we see the autumnal equinox right the on 23rd september and the vernal equinox on march 21 now children this is a complete picture of the revolution of the earth showing the solstice and equinox so very very important to understand here children as you told as uh, on june 21st right june 21st is the longest day in the summer uh, in the summer during the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and december 22 is the longest night right now what is the leap year our children in the beginning only i told you that the earth takes 365 one fourth day to revolve around the sun so for the convenience the number of days in a year is considered as 365 and 1/4 is kept aside so how many how many hours are there in 1/4 right there are the 6 hours so 6 hours are saved every year and they are accumulated or they are calculated after every 4 years right 6 into 4 equal to 24 hours so the every fourth year is considered as a leap year in which february has 29 days means the extra day is added to february which is the shortest month of the year thank you children watch the video and read the chapter